You know, one of the great um, pleasures of travel, as I'm sure most of us have experienced, is the opportunity to live amongst those who have not forgotten the old ways, to still feel the pass in the wind, uh, touch it in stones polished by rain, taste it in the bitter leaves of plants. And just to know that today, in the Amazon, jaguar shaman are still journeying beyond the Milky Way. Uh, in the high Arctic, the, the myths of the Inuit elders still resonate with meaning. And that in the Himalaya, the Buddhists still pursue the breath of the Dharma, is to remember kind of the central revelation of anthropology. And that's the idea that the world into which you were born does not exist in some absolute sense, but is just one model of reality. But whether it is a voodoo acolyte in Haiti, a yak herder in the slopes of Shomalungma, an eagle hunter in Kazakhstan, or a thunderhoof shaman in Mongolia, all of these peoples teach us that there are other ways of being, other ways of thinking, and other ways of orienting yourself in social and political and spiritual ecological space. And that's an idea that if you think about it, can only fill you with hope. Now together, the myriad of cultures of the world make up a kind of a social web of life that envelops the planet and is as important to the well-being of the planet as is the biological web of life that you know as a biosphere. And you could think of this cultural web of life as being an ethnosphere. And you could define the ethnosphere as a sum total of all thoughts and dreams, ideas and inspirations, myths and memories brought into being by the human imagination since the dawn of consciousness. The ethnosphere is humanity's great legacy. It's a symbol of all that we've achieved and the promise of all that we can achieve as a wildly creative and imaginative species. And just as the biosphere is being severely impacted with the loss of habitat, so too the ethnosphere, but if anything, at a far greater rate. Few biologists would suggest that 50% of plants and animals are on the brink of extinction, dire as the situation indeed is. And yet that the most apocalyptic scenario in the realm of biological diversity scarcely approaches what we know to be the most optimistic scenario in the realm of cultural diversity. And the great indicator of that, of course, is language loss. When each of us were born, there were 7,000 languages spoken on Earth. Now, a language isn't just a body of vocabulary or a set of grammatical rules. A language is a flash of the human spirit. It's a vehicle through which the soul of every culture comes into the material world. Every language I once wrote was an old growth forest of the mind, a watershed of thought, an ecosystem of social and spiritual possibilities. And of those 7,000 languages, by absolute academic consensus, half aren't being taught to children, which means they're on the brink of extinction. Now, there are many people who say, wouldn't the world be a better place if we all spoke one language? Wouldn't uh, communication be facilitated? Wouldn't it be easier for us to get along? And my answer to that is always to say, what a great idea, but let's make that language Mongolian. Let's make it Inuptitak. Let's make it uh, Haida you suddenly begin to feel, as a native speaker of English, what it would be like to be enveloped by silence, to have no ability to pass on the wisdom of your ancestry, or to anticipate the promise of your descendants. Uh, and yet that is the fate of somebody somewhere on Earth every fortnight, because on average, every two weeks, some elder passes away and carries with him or her into the grave the last syllables of an ancient tongue. So in the end, we have to ask ourselves, what kind of world do we want to live in? A monochromatic world of, of uh, monotony or a polychromatic world of diversity? Do we want our children to wake up and, and as if from a dream, having never even remembered that there are other possibilities for life itself? Culture is not trivial. This, it is not decorative. Culture is not the prayers we utter or the costumes we wear. Ultimately, culture is about a body of ethical and moral values that we place around each individual to keep at bay, to keep the barbaric heart of humanity at bay, um, to allow us to make sense out of sensation, to find order in the universe and meaning in the universe, to do what Lincoln said, always seek the better angels of our nature. What kind of world do you want to live in? And I, and I think that's what this is all about. That's a poetry of cultural diversity. To lose a culture is to lose something of ourselves.